Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we always have as you have called us to serve you, to prepare us and make us the best we ought to be in the service of the Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, as we come to this meeting every time, every week, that your grace will be abundant in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. And you help us to serve you, serve you with grace, serve you with strength, and with the wisdom from above, so that will be the best we ought to be to the church, to your people, and so that the kingdom of God will be expanded and Christ will be exalted through our ministries in Jesus' name. Speak to every heart tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In First Timothy chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly unto them, that thy prophet thyself, and unto the doctrine continuing them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Tonight I want to concentrate on the minister's commitment to progress. You will see in the verses we have read together that Paul the Apostle was telling Timothy, by the way Timothy was a pastor at this time in the church in Ephesus. And the church was going through quite a lot of things. He had met with the elders of the church in Acts of the Apostles, chapter seven, chapter 20. And having met with them, he had told them what he expected and what were the prophetic things for the last time, last days, uh, the latter times of that church. And some of those things actually were being fulfilled even in the lifetime of Paul the Apostle. And Timothy, a trusted leader, a trusted minister, he was with them ministering to them, appointing leaders, and making sure that the sound doctrine of the word of God was still being emphasized. Paul the apostle now wanted him to understand. He needed to do the work in such a way that his profiting, the ministerial progress, will be known not only to him, not only to the church of Ephesus, but even to all men that know about that church and know about his ministry. That's why he said, I've been reaching a lot of things to him. He said, meditate on these things. What a challenge for the present day in which we're living. Because these are days that people do not find the time or the heart or the mind or the attitude to even meditate on anything. They jump from this event to that event, that program to that other thing. But then he says, take time, meditate on these things. Having heard the word of God, having jotted the notes down, it's not enough that we have heard. We need to take time, meditate on all those things. Give thyself wholly, completely, entirely. Abandon yourself, addict yourself, immerse yourself in all these things. Why? So that your progress, profiting, may appear unto all. It's not enough that you feel you are making progress by yourself. I think I'm doing well. I think things are all right. I think I'm better today than I was previously. He says, you want that ministerial progress, that profiting to appear unto all. Take it to thyself, he said, and to the doctrine. In your personal life and then the teaching of the word of God continue in them. In all the teachings of the word of God. Because it was later to tell him that the time will come when men will not endure some doctrine. They will say, yes, we believe that in the past. We don't believe that anymore. And so he said that you will continue in them so that in doing that you will be able to save both yourself and the people that hear you. As I look at this uh, portion of this, uh, First Timothy, and uh, let's look at number one, pattern for disciples. He said, Timothy, it's not enough to preach. It's not enough to exhort. It's not enough to counsel. It's not enough to pray for people. It's not enough to challenge people. Timothy, you know what? The ministry demands that you will have such a life that will be a pattern to the people you are leading. Look at it in verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Unless you misunderstand the word youth because of the way we make use of the word. Uh, Timothy was about 36 years of age at this time. And uh, Paul was 
between 64 and 66. And you can understand, because of the 30 years gap in between them, he would look at him and call him a young fellow. And he said, even though you are young, do not allow anyone to despise your youth. There's another reason here now. The church in Ephesus had been established before Timothy was now transferred there to be a pastor. And therefore, there were elders there, there were older people there, and even the membership of the church, a lot of them, will be looking down him that is just a young fellow. That's why he said, your ministry to people that are much older than you are, let no man despise your youth. Are you to do that? Are you to come before the congregation and brag? God has appointed me a pastor, a shepherd, a leader, so that don't despise me. Are you to be telling them every now and then touch not the anointed of the Lord? Are you not? Are you to be threatening them that uh, you know I'm a minister of God? If you do this, this will happen. He said Timothy, that's not the way. He said this is the way that the people will not despise your youth. Look at it in verse twelve. Be thou an example. If you are ministering and you want the honor and the respect of the people you are ministering to, it says there's only one way. Be a pattern of the disciples of the Lord in that congregation. An example of the believers in words. The words you preach, the words you say, your communication, the conversations you have, do everything as if the members of your congregation, they are watching you. And ask yourself, if everybody were to do exactly what I do, say what I say, act the way I act, converse the way I converse, where will they land? Will they land in heaven? Will they land in the bosom of the Lord? Therefore, be an example in what? In conversation. The word conversation, the original actually means your manner of life, your conduct, your character your behavior be an example to the others understand that the pastor the leader of the minister and leaders we are here tonight we're not islands by ourselves there is a kind of interwoven relationship there is a network and there are ripples on the sea anything you do anything you say any way you act is going to affect quite a lot of other people and because of that effect on other people your life your lifestyle your character your behavior you want it to be a model a pattern unto the people then he said in charity how you ought to be an example in love that the love of Christ that you bear and the way you speak and the things you say and the, the places you go and the, the comments you pass everything will show that there is that charity and you understand what Paul was saying when he talked about charity if you go back to 1st Corinthians chapter 13 he said Timothy if that were possible for you you wake up in the morning and read through Acts chapter uh, uh, sorry 1st Corinthians chapter 13 have your quiet time read every other thing in the scriptures and then then as you finalize everything before you go out, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If we were to do that, that whatever you are doing in your quiet time, and wherever you are now in your spiritual life, when you finish everything in the morning, go back to 1 Corinthians 13. And then anybody you meet during the day, you say, this is a pattern. And to be an example in the demonstration of love and charity in that thing that I read, you come back in the evening, you ask yourself, yourself how did i do today and you go back again to first corinthians chapter 13 so that you can be measuring it every time evaluating it every time am i an example in charity as well and then it tells us you'll be an example in spirit in spirit that's uh, in spirit there is not referring to the holy spirit is it's talking about the spirit the attitude in which you do something uh, you know sometimes uh, attitude is contagious the attitude we have if it's a pleasant attitude a sweet attitude as we're relating to people and you know as workers in the church uh, you cannot do without this good attitude I told you before I, I read it somewhere myself that it is not your aptitude that determines your altitude it is your attitude aptitude is you know your sense your knowledge your ability your skill everything you have and it's not the aptitude it is the attitude that determines how far you'll go how high you are going to go and other people say aptitude plus attitude will be equal to altitude therefore be sure that your attitude is right your spirit is right and you see there are various sections in the church as a leader you don't have a threat for any section 
the young people, the children, the women, the men, let everybody know you have the right attitude to them. Then in faith, in faith, and you know if you are going to be an example in faith, your own life too will be a kind, a symbol of faith. You, you, are, you are showing the people that you believe whatsoever is not of faith is seen. Therefore, every time in the way you, you direct people, you counsel people, you will not direct them to go to places where you know they are going to be misled. And then it says now, you are also to be an example in purity. You are going to be an example in a life of holiness. So that tells us then, if we are ministers and we are, if we are leaders and we are, if we are workers and we are, you must be a pattern to the disciples of the Lord. Isn't that the total testimony, the entire testimony of the whole scripture? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Reading there in verse 9. It says, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Here Paul the apostle said, oh, there were some liberties we would have taken. There are some things we would have done. There are some things we would have demanded from you. And we would have used our authority as ministers of the world. But we didn't. What didn't you, Paul? To make us, to make ourselves examples unto you. Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2 verse 7. Here we are told, as Paul was writing to a Titus. Here it says in all things. Not in some things. Your marital life. In your business life in the work that you do and in your relationship with members of the church it says in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine showing on corruptness gravity and sincerity and uh, and it's not only just uh, you know when you are in the church anywhere you are everywhere you are you know there, there are times i don't know whether you you have had this experience you really didn't know that anybody knew you in that community where you were because it's far away from the location of your ministry and then somebody will say uh, good morning sister or good afternoon uh, brother you say where did you know me oh you say but uh, you are one of our leaders i knew you you have been a blessing to my life and then you'll tell yourself quietly what if i was doing something wrong here now see how this person confronted me that's the reason why anywhere you are you know that you are not just a minister on sunday it's not just when you are in the house fellowship it's not just when you are preaching every time the mark of the lord is upon you you must be a model a pattern an example in a second corinthians chapter 9 the latter part of verse 2 actually last line there and your zeal has provoked very many and you are to be an example in the way you have zeal in the work of the lord i go to number two the priority of personal development and remember now that uh, paul was talking to timothy and paul was telling timothy he said timothy uh, you're actually wearing in a big shoe uh, because uh, you know paul the apostle himself administered in the church at Ephesus and he was uh, telling the Ephesians when he was uh, giving them a kind of a farewell address and he was uh, fellowshipping with them at that time when he collected the elders together and he told them how he administered to them uh, for a number of years he actually said in Acts of the Apostles I turn there for put your finger in first Timothy Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 and then in verse uh, in verse 31 therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years i cease not to warn every one of you night and day with tears that means paul the apostle himself and you understand the calling of paul you understand the consecration of paul you understand the commitment of paul you understand the high ministry and the effectiveness of paul the apostle think about it that Paul the Apostle had been there for three years. And here young Timothy, inexperienced Timothy, he took over. And then Paul the Apostle said, Timothy, you know what? That's a challenge of ministry, that place where you are. Because you must understand, I was in that place, not moving away to any other place for three years, solid years. Therefore, you need personal development. That takes me to that point, the priority of personal development. Uh, you understand that uh, a lot of uh, people in your districts, in your places, uh, they have been in the church for a long time. In fact, some of them might have been in the church before some of you. 
and uh, you are now having the privilege of ministering to them. And remember too, they have had the privilege of listening to cassettes, of having direct ministration from the Central Headquarters Church here. And here you are now, you find yourself ministering unto them. What a challenge. That's why personal development ought to be a priority in your life. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 till I come. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. He said, Timothy, you won't make it without personal development. And until I come, all the materials you have in hand already, give attention to this. And concentrate on this. And pursue having higher knowledge, higher understanding. And give attention and focus on your own spiritual progress and development. And then he said, you'll give attention, number one, to reading. Read it. The scriptures, what you have. And then to exhortation. Out of what you have there, explain it. Analyze it. Give exhortation, encouragement to people. And then he says, don't forget the doctrine. Because the doctrine is the backbone of the teaching that you have. And that has been the, uh, the, the attitude of Paul the Apostle. He didn't want uh, children that, were, that had stunted growth. He wanted people, believers, that were growing and developing. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let's go on unto perfection. He said, this is what we need to do. Uh, you will leave those uh, elementary, rudimentary, basic things, repeating those uh, fundamental things every time. What we are going to do now is to move on. Move on. Let us go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead words and of faith towards God. And then in verse 3, this we will do if God permit. It says, this moving on, this development we are talking about, this progress we are talking about, because the church cannot move fa faster and higher than their leaders. If the leaders make progress in their spiritual lives, then the church will make progress. But if the, if the leaders themselves are retarded and very slow and lethargic, and they do not have the spiritual progress they ought to have, how is the church going to make progress? Why, by the way, was uh, Paul writing to the Hebrews, and then he told them, let's go on unto perfection. Because he noticed something among them. In, a, in a Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. And this very thing he was telling them, he said, hey, let's move on to perfection. Let's make progress. We've been in this stagnant situation for a long time. And uh, he said he had tried to pass across to them something higher, something greater than what they knew before, but they were dull of hearing. Then he said, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one should teach you again the very first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. That's the reason he was now telling them, eh, let's leave these rudimentary things, primary level education and knowledge, and let's move move on to higher things and greater things. And uh, that wasn't only the concept of Paul the Apostle, led by the Spirit of God. It was same with Peter in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence. You know what Paul told Timothy? Give attention, give, give attendance to reading. Make out time to develop yourself. It's very important because you will slow down the church if you do not make spiritual progress. And here Peter says, you give all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Do you have the time when you actually develop yourself? Do you have the time when you actually read the scriptures? Do you have the time when you have personal retreat? Do you have the time when you concentrate on the necessity of making spiritual progress in your life? Very important. Actually, in, a first, in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Reading from verse 11, you know this. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying, that means building up of the body of Christ. Then verse 13, very essential. Look at your Bible, please. Till we all come 
into in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We have a long way to go. Because it says, here the, uh, the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and the teachers, they're teaching and ministering. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. Imperfection is never to be excused, either in us or in the congregation. And then it said, Unto the, for the perfecting of the saints, until we all come in the unity of the faith and then of the knowledge of the Son of God. You think about your knowledge? You think about the knowledge of the Son of God, and you think of the gap, and you're asking of your, and you're asking yourself, what do I do that I will move from here to there? Look at where I am. After five years, ten years, twenty years of being in Christ, and look at how I fall short, how I'm still far away from the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ. If it has taken us 20, 25, 30 years to move just a little bit, to make a little bit of spiritual progress, how long will it take us then to get to the fullness of Christ? That's why we need to be diligent about it and we need to actually uh, concentrate so that we will have progress and we will have progress in Jesus' name. If the members are to come to the fullness of Christ, how much more the leaders that are leading them? Then, if that is going to take place, because Timothy should be wondering by now, how do I do that? This is a great challenge. And uh, am I going to climb to the top of the ladder and then be at that stage? And then Paul the Apostle said, First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15, it says, Meditate upon these things, take inventory, look at the place you are, Look at the place you ought to be. Look at other people, patriarchs of old, prophets of old, priests of old, the people that move from one level to another level. See what they did. Meditate on these things. It said you have been traveling a uh, fellow worker with me, and you have been sharing with me, and you have seen how I myself, how I have been, Paul was saying. It said, and I have told you a lot of things. Meditate on these things. And you see this epistle I'm writing to you, and I've been emphasizing it to you, what a leader, what it means how to do. That you may know how to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the ground and the pillar of truth. All those things I've told you, meditate on these things. Meditation will contribute very much to the development and spiritual progress of the leader, the minister, the worker. Meditate on these things. Give thyself Holy unto them. How? Paul, like the drunkards give themselves to drinking. Like the drug addicts give themselves, abandon themselves, addict themselves unto alcohol or drugs. Like the people who are wayward and immoral, like they give themselves and they immerse themselves into evil and immorality. Like those idol worshippers, haven't you seen them before in Ephesus, uh, Timothy, haven't you seen them? How they abandon themselves completely, entirely unto the idolatry. Timothy, do that and abandon yourself into the hands of the Lord. And just make sure that you give yourself wholly unto them. And uh, how do you know when to stop? That you have actually done enough and the gauge is all right now until your profiting will, be, will appear unto all. Take it yourself, Timothy. And what uh, Paul told him is telling every one of us, take it yourself. There is a devil out there that wants you to fall. Take it yourself. There is a weakness in your flesh that will easily yield unto temptation. Take it unto yourself because the enemies of the gospel are looking for your fall. Take it unto yourself. The position you have is a delicate position. Take it unto yourself. There are other people that are eyeing and spying and envying the position position you have and you'll be too glad if anything will happen and then you'll be blown away from that place and therefore take heed unto yourself. Take heed unto yourself the time is short. Take heed unto yourself. There is an enemy that doesn't want you to have that spiritual progress. Always be thinking about yourself and look at your own spiritual weakness and say I need strengthening here. I need energizing here. I need uplifting here. I need encouragement here and then look at the word of God and find Find things that will help you to develop in your areas of weakness and unto the doctrine 
onto the doctrine. Don't be carried away by sentimental messages. It is the, the messages that are based and grounded on the doctrines of the Bible that are solid enough to build up the congregation. Continue in them because Timothy, in doing this, you'll save yourself. You'll save yourself. Your salvation is not complete yet. You are born again. That's not the end of the road. You are sanctified, Timothy. That's not the end of the road. And then through the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, you have had the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Spirit. You have not got to the end of the road. You still will take it yourself and to the doctrine, lest you fall and then you can still miss out. Because even myself, you were saying, Paul, the apostle, the aged, talking to young Timothy, I still put my body under. Less. After preaching to others, I make myself a castaway. Timothy, take it yourself. And you know there are ministers and there are workers, there are Christian leaders. They live as if no problem, no danger, but sliding, that's forgotten. They cannot get to hell. It appears that they feel there is a kind of eternal security, specially for them, even though they know eternal security is not for everybody. He said, Timothy, there's nothing like that. Even Paul, the apostle, the aged apostle, has not got to the level he will feel that I'm eternally secured no matter what I do. Take heed unto yourself. And then he says, it's in that way, you'll save yourself and save the people that hear you. I pray that the people that hear you, the people you are ministering to you, they'll have spiritual progress. You yourself, you'll have spiritual progress. But if you're going to have spiritual progress, you need to do something about it. You must be committed to that progress. Progress in yourself, progress in the workers, progress in the church, progress in every way. The Lord will do it if we are willing, if we are committed, and we want it in our lives. Let's rise up, talk to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I want to make progress. You don't want to hear things like this and just hear it and, uh, you know, shrug your shoulders and uh, take uh, your Bible and then go home and say that's fine that's all right we'll make progress by and by one day no you must do something definite about it i said you should stand up can you stand up how much progress have you made all these years spiritual progress understanding of the word of god in virtue in conduct in conversation in spirit in attitude in your associations associating with people interacting with people talking to people discussing with people counseling people praying for people teaching the word of god explaining the scriptures and being emphatic on the things that are very important how much progress have you made in your area of work that the lord has committed into your hand how much progress is the church of the living god making through your ministration Let's be committed to spiritual progress of ourselves and of the church of the living God.